Life and sponsored by Capital Reserve Investment Bank, NRV Bank, Sukasa Properties and Adum City Estate. Now coming up in the headlines, Ghanaian property developers are showing that green and affordable housing is possible. The Lands Commission find 100,000 Ghana cities for withholding information and in international news a survey in India has shown at least 65% of women choose to invest in real estate. The news in details. Ghanaian property developers are showing that green and affordable housing is possible. According to experts, Africa's population is expected to grow by 315 million by 2030. Buildings account for about 40% of the world's energy related greenhouse gas emissions each year, making sustainable building design more important than ever. Ghana's housing deficit has exceeded his 2 million homes and integrating green building policies into affordable housing for the masses would be particularly beneficial in reducing the deficit and overall global carbon footprint. Real estate developers Affair Group has partnered with Real, a UK-based development organization supporting affordable housing in Africa and Asia to build 100 eco-friendly properties in the Lahug suburb of Tamale, the capital of the northern region of Ghana. The project includes green building measures and in April 2022, they received EDGE certification. Environmentally friendly measures such as low flow water fixtures, compressed clay block walls, and naturally ventilated spaces enable the project to achieve a 34% improvement in energy efficiency, a 31% improvement in water efficiency, and a 56% improvement in contained energy, aiming to be in materials compared to traditional local building methods. Another Ghanaian property developer, Rehoboth, has contributed significantly to reducing the country's housing shortage by building his 1,700 units multifamily housing complex in Kwabena in Accra. Moving on, the Ministry of Works and Housing to work with the various MMDAs to implement Building Accessibility for the Disabled Act. The Ministry of Works and Housing will continue to work with the various metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies, MMDAs, to ensure the implementation of the Building Accessibility for the Disabled PWD Act. Mr. Francis Asensubwach, Minister of Works and Housing, said that the rights of persons with disabilities under the 2006 The Persons with Disabilities Act, Act 715, also covers access to public places and public services. He noted that Section 6 of Act 715 requires the owner or occupier of a place accessible to the public to provide adequate facilities to make the place accessible to the disabled. He said this on the floor of parliament while responding to questions from Abla Jifa Gomashi, National Democratic Congress, NDC MP for Ketu South. Mr. Sensubwachi stated that LI 2465 provided for the possibility for people with disabilities to use facilities and services that are open or accessible to the public. He reiterated that since 2016, many owners and users of public buildings have made efforts, particularly by installing elevators, ramps, and handrails to make their properties wheelchair accessible. Moving on, the Lands Commission fined 100,000 Ghana cities for withholding information. The Lands Commission was fined 100,000 Ghana cities by the Right to Information Commission, RTIC, for failing to respond to a request for information from the pressure group Occupy Ghana regarding returned state lands. The RTIC commanded the Commission to make the information public within 14 days in a decision dated 2nd March 2023. In addition, any 14 day breach of the rule will result in a 10% default penalty added to the administrative fine. The Lands Commission was cited by Occupy Ghana for failing to provide the pressure group with the requested information since June of last year, and the RTIC made the decision. It was also asked to provide the amount of rent paid 
or payable in any other amounts paid or received by the government, if any, for each such transaction. Please stay with us as we go for a short break. We'll be right back. From the break now, let's go to India. Real estate consultant Anna Rock conducted a survey throughout India which shows that 83% of women have the highest quality homes costing 90 vanishes. The consumer survey sample was 5,500 of which 50% of the respondents were women. According to the survey, at least 65% of respondents chose to invest in real estate and then 20% of the stock markets. Santosh Kumar, vice chairman of Anarok Group, said, over the last decade, women have emerged as a major residential real estate buyer segment, especially in the urban centers. As millennials, their attitudes now influence the supplies that the developers make on the market. Anarok also noted that there are many benefits that Indian women can use to buy and register real estate by their own names. Various government policies support and promote women's ownership rights in the country. That's all for news. Thank you for staying with us. And a very big thank you to Capital Reserve Investments Bank, NRB Bank, Sukasa Properties, and Adum City Estates for sponsoring. For more news, kindly visit our website, www.propertyexpress.org. You can also reach us on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter at Property Express. My name is Nanaya Ochebia, and this has been PE Live. Thank you, and have a good time.